Good afternoon, everybody. It's Pastor Jim, and it is Thursday. What is this? Thursday afternoon, and I'm here to share with you a story. And today I am wearing this fancy derby hat. What do you think? I think I look okay in this. <laughs> I don't know who's out there watching, but I was having a good time last Thursday and I wasn't able to be here, but I hope you have had a happy new year and that things are going pretty well at your house. I hope that you had a nice Christmas and that you had a lot of uh, good food and maybe got some nice presents and spent time with family that you love. Uh, I know that I missed you. I'm sorry that uh, we weren't able to be together, but it is good and it's nice to be here. I'm going to read a story today, uh, but before I show you that story, I just want to hold up a book that we found in the church called Be Filled with Faith, uh, Words of Well-Being, and to strengthen your spirit. I think that this is an adult book, but there's a lot of adults who watch this. And so I'm just holding this up. We're going to keep it here at the church uh, office. Uh, one of the clues that it might be an adult book is that I think somebody spilled coffee on it one time. <laughs> anyway, I am excited about this story. It is a classic. It is a little golden book. And it's called The Pokey Little Puppy. And people have been enjoying this story for a long, long, long time. On the inside of the book, it says that this book was originally written in 1942. 1942. Uh, in, in our country, in the United States, we were part of uh, World War II in 1942 and that's the first time when the pokey little puppy came out but it was rewritten remade in 1970 which uh, is a long time ago too uh, i was a little tiny person in 1970 and i remember my mom and my dad reading the pokey little puppy to me and so now i'm reading it to you so strap on your hat. I hope you're wearing one. Uh, I'm still doing it, so I want you to be still doing it too. And we're going to read this book. It is <clears throat> it is written by Jeanette Sebring Lowry, and the pictures were created by Gustav Tengren. I'll show you the first picture, so you have a little idea of what I'm reading about. Five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, one right after the other. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves, one, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now, where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered, for he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. Here's the next picture. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a fuzzy caterpillar. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a quick green lizard. There's your lizard. Does it look pretty quick to you? So it wasn't the caterpillar or the lizard. Where is that pokey little puppy? When they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, running around and around with his nose to the ground. There he is. wonder why he's doing that. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-tumble, till they came to the green grass. And there they stopped short. 
What in the world are you doing? they asked. I smell something, said the pokey little puppy. Then the four little puppies began to sniff, and they smelled it too. Rice pudding, they said. And home they went as fast as they, as they could over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with rice pudding for dessert. There they all are. Rice pudding, that's a pretty good day if you get rice pudding for dessert. But their mother was greatly displeased. So you're the little puppies who dig holes under fences? She said. No rice pudding tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. But the pokey little puppy came home after everyone was sound asleep. He ate up the rice pudding and crawled into bed as happy as a lark. So well, there he is, eating the rice pudding. He was slow, so he didn't hear when Mother said, you go straight to bed with no pudding. The next morning, someone had filled the hole and put up a sign that said, don't ever dig holes under this fence. That's what that sign says. Don't ever dig holes under this fence. I wonder who put that sign up. But the five little puppies, guess what they did? They dug a hole under the fence just the same and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered, for he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a big black spider. He wasn't coming up on this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a brown hoppy toad. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there was the pokey little puppy. There's the hoppy toad. <laughs> but there was the pokey little puppy sitting still as a stone with his head on one side and his ears cocked up. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see, roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-tumble, till they came to the green grass, and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing, they asked. I hear something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies listened, and they could hear it too. Chocolate custard, they cried. Someone is spooning it into our bowls. And home they went as fast as they could over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, under the fence, and there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with chocolate custard for dessert. But their mother was greatly displeased. So you're the little puppies who will dig holes under fences, she said. No chocolate custard tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. There they are. They thought they were going to have chocolate custard, and it turns out they didn't because they were naughty and they dug a hole under the fence. <laughs> but the pokey little puppy came home after everyone else was sound asleep, and he ate up all the chocolate custard and crawled into bed as happy as a lark. The next morning, someone had filled the hole and put up a sign. And the sign said, don't ever dig holes under this fence. But in spite of that, the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. 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 One
two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now, where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered, for he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. <clears throat> he wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a little grass snake. See that snake? He wasn't coming up this other side. The only thing they could see coming up that side was a big grasshopper. There's the grasshopper. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, looking hard at something on the ground in front of him. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-bumble, till they came to the green grass and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? they asked. I see something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies looked around and they could see it too. It was a ripe red strawberry growing there in the grass. Strawberry shortcake, they cried. See the strawberry? Mmm, strawberry shortcake. At home, they went as fast as they could go, over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with strawberry shortcake for dessert. But their mother said, So you're the little puppies who dug that hole under the fence again? No strawberry shortcake for supper tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. But the four little puppies waited till they thought she was asleep, and then they slipped out and filled up the hole, and when they turned around, there was their mother watching them. What good little puppies, she said. Come, have some strawberry shortcake. At this time, when the pokey little puppy got home, he had to squeeze in through a wide place in the fence, and there were his four brothers and sisters licking the last crumbs from their saucer. Dear me, said his mother, what a pity you're so pokey. Now the strawberry shortcake is all gone. So the pokey little puppy had to go to bed without a single bite of shortcake, and he felt very sorry for himself. There he is. He's in bed. He didn't get any strawberry shortcake. He feels sorry for himself. He probably should. At least he should be sorry that he made a mistake and didn't do what he was supposed to do. The next morning, someone had put up a sign that read, No desserts ever unless puppies never dig holes under this fence again. <laughs> no dessert ever unless puppies never dig holes under the fence again. The end. <laughs> That's the pokey little puppy. Uh, I will tell you a secret that's not really a secret, but maybe you don't know. I love dessert. Uh, I love pudding, and I love cake, and I love strawberry shortcake, and I love cookies, and anything else, especially ice cream. And so I I don't ever want to read a sign that says no dessert ever. <laughs> but if I did see a sign that said no dessert ever, if it's told me a way where I could get dessert, like if I do what I'm supposed to be doing and I stay out of trouble, then I'm going to stay out of trouble because I like dessert and I, I want to not miss any of it. But anyway, I know that you're all good boys and girls, that none of you ever do naughty things that your parents tell you not to do uh, and I know that whenever there's dessert you've been good and so you get to eat whatever it is that that treat is uh, for you but I'm glad to be able to share that story with you I will put this up one more time just in case you're tuning in late we found this book called be filled with faith words of well-being <clears throat> to strengthen your soul so this is here at the church 
we'll keep it around for a little while before we uh, share it with somebody else. But I love you guys. Uh, I'm going to take off my hat and pray with you. And then I'll uh, maybe see you on Sunday. We're going to have the church open again on Sunday. And if you can come, I hope you will. And it's going to be a special time. If not, maybe you can ask your mom and dad to help you. And you can be in church with us Sunday morning on Facebook. <clears throat> God, I thank you for these children. I thank you for every family, for every mom and dad, grandma and grandpa and cousin and uncle and aunt. Thank you for brothers and sisters and all the different people you put in our lives that care about us. I thank you for our church family and the people that love us there. Uh, and we ask that you would bless everybody, that you would help them in school, that you would help them to behave well, and that they would all be shining lights for Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I pray in his name. Amen. Okay, everybody. Love you. I'll see you next week for Pastor Jim in a hat. Bye.